it really does look like like part of what adds to the idea of it being like liminal feeling is that like it looks like it was taken by flash photography unnecessarily because it's already dark like it's a, a space where take using the flash will lead that, that effect where everything out of the flash's range is really dark yeah it, it looks it just looks like a darkly lit it has room a weird shine to it but there's also like there's it's a very large open space with lots of like seating and walls but no no people no people but also no destination like there's nothing it's not apparent in the frame what this room is for or what you would do here. Well, to me, I can guess. Like to me, this looks like um, like behind that wall would either be like a gymnastics area, like a bunch of mats, or like a, a skating area, like with skates. And because in the back, I think that those are lockers. Yeah, it looks like it's blocking something, but I just can't tell. I just hate this carpet. It makes me <laughs> angry. I feel like I feel like it would it would have French fries mashed into it, and it would just smell <laughs> like uh, a Chuck E. Cheese. Like it smells like it smells like kids sweat, and um, like chicken nuggets. <laughs> Which is like <laughs> it would smell like the back of a car when you've let your kids have Happy Meals, and then the smell is just always there. No, I feel like I under I've <laughs> I've been an older sister <laughs> and an smell. older cousin for a very long time, uh. and I remember being a twelve year old with a, a, a one year old and a like three-year-old in the car and me no. being like oh no my life is different <laughs> I, I was an only child once and now i have to deal with like cheeto <laughs> crumbs everywhere i'm just kidding i love my siblings but man i don't miss any of this shit <laughs> so despite being open the plex certainly doesn't look like it should be wow the carpet is musty told you everything smells like mildew the game machines are decades old, which is good. Shut up. And the roller rink is scratched up to all hell. That's See, what it's supposed to be. I knew it. That's what I told. That's what I said it was supposed to be like a roller thing. Leo stops next to a claw, a claw prize machine and fishes around his pocket for quarters. What is an aesthetic blog? An Instagram account. It takes me a moment to register what he's asking, and I can't help but be tickled a bit by the question. I know for a fact that Leo spends a lot of time on the internet, but mainly on the mainstream sites. Sports, music, that sort of thing. It's like a ongoing online page that you update with stuff that sort of corresponds to a mood or feeling. So it's like a, a Pinterest. Yeah. But some people dedicate their whole Instagram accounts to having Tumblr. an aesthetic. Yeah. Like, like, I don't know, I know a bunch of mo moody girls who take, like, shadowy pictures that are, like, black and red and, like, like, it's like that, the uh, moon the and song. crows and stuff. The, the Bob Burnham song? Yeah, the one making fun of, like, uh, white girls' Instagram. Yes, exactly like yeah. that. Yes, yes, yes. He slides two quarters into the machine, then grabs the control stick. A few lights in the machine begin to glow and flash, moving in a pattern around the glass window. About half the bulbs are burnt out. Oh, I have one of those. You do? Yeah, but it's mainly porn, though. Wait, what is he talking about? Oh, oh an, an aesthetic, aesthetic blog? blog? <laughs> <laughs> he has the aesthetic blog of porn. Um, I don't think it's a. I mean, uh, I think it's just called a folder on your desktop, it's dude. All, no, it's public if it's online. <laughs> Man, I went on a date with this guy once, and. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, 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 there's never good reasons you start sentences stories with that no, sentence yeah, it's always I, I, bad. I, tell, I tell stories for a reason <laughs> and um, basically he was like he was like oh yeah no I have this uh, like he was talking about how he has like a, a sex blog and I was like oh that's I mean, like like basically like like, se like um what did I think it was going to be like? I thought it was going to be like a um, like a like, like a, a sexual openness like, like kind he of writes about yeah sex. yeah no it was just a bunch of pictures of his dick <laughs> like it was li like I was like I was like okay this isn't a blog because you don't write anything and it's literally just pictures of your dick and he just means he has like a tumbler full of dick pics <laughs> yeah and then, and then and literally years pass. I have this fucking effect on people. I don't know why people, <laughs> they reach out to me years later. I actually have this message on my Instagram right now where he reached out to me and he was like, it's like, oh, because like, OnlyFans became a thing since, since I met him. He's like, oh, I'm like, I'm popular on Inst like on OnlyFans. Like he was like bragging about his, his percentages, like his percentile oh. of popularity. I'm like, 
I didn't say anything. He's like, he's like, you you know, if you got on there too, you you'd be like the upper percentile. And I was like, why did you send me this message out of fucking nowhere? I just did not respond to this person because <laughs> they're thinking of you. Obviously, years later, but he just want to brag just about such an impact on people. He's You're just like so cool. Oh my god, I'm not like I I am, but not even like. But no, he was just like trying, trying, to, trying to come after you. Like, look at check it out. This dick's got clout now. Yeah, I think he's trying to brag. Like, look, look at my good numbers. Look at my dick numbers. And I'm like, I found new ways to have dick numbers besides the obvious. I looked at I he, he sent me a link to his blog back when I thought it was a blog, and his dick's not that great. <laughs> I'm just gonna put, put that out there, okay? It wasn't even like an amazing dick. <laughs> but. But yeah, and he's like, no, you should, you should try it. And I'm like, are you trying to do a collab with me or something? That's not gonna happen. I don't do that. That was his long con all along. <laughs> just to frame it as a collab. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's mainly porn, though. I wasn't ready. Uh, we had to discover stuff on our own in the Leo route. He's just like, he's just, he's handing he's it just, out now. He's yeah, just, like just use tissues everywhere. <laughs> Is it otter porn though? Jesus Christ, Leo is un is not he does not leave any route unscathed. He makes a lewd jerking motion with a control stick, and I'm put at slight unease, noting that this machine is meant for children. <laughs> oh no! Uh, he's really bad at this. Well, better than storing it all in your sample music folder, I suppose. I actually got caught with that, you know. Damn it! I told you. Yeah, yeah, Otter. I know. Someone just wanted some actual. <laughs> there we go. He wants stock music. My oh no, my little nephew Eduardo wanted to play games on my computer, and he started clicking around on the recent files thing. No! Oh my God, Leo. He's like ten. He furrows his brow, moving the crane some some, moving the crane some absently. He's thirteen. His dad is your really religious brother, too, right? Yeah. Jesus. Hey, ain't nearly as bad as getting caught cockin' paw at the Padres while watching Fox Horse gay porn. <laughs> <laughs> By the Padres. Once again, a reference to Fox in the Stable. Yeah. Which I have, had the, which I have confirmed is what it was, because I just asked McSkinny outright. And that made it into the essay. <laughs> You know your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I cringe, covering my face. This is my legacy now. Ugh. Hey, look. I pull my paws away from, from my face to see Leo point to something in the machine. I squint, and in the midst of puzzle cubes and spinner toys, a boxed lucha wolf figure rests. <gasps> He's gonna <gasps> save Christmas! Oh my gosh! Or too reinforces inadequacy, let's find out. Too bad Carl's not gonna want to open the door for us. <laughs> Leo shifts his gaze towards me and grins. I see him navigate the crane perpendicular with the box's point of rest. He hits the lowering button. The metal claw descends into the pit of cheap toys, clenching down upon the cardboard edge of the box. It, it tugs at it slightly, but it loses its grip and returns to its point of rest. Pfft. <laughs> Shit. Let me have a go. I reach into my back pocket for my wallet, but Leo's already putting two more coins in. He gestures to the machine and tips an invisible hat in my direction. I find myself rolling my eyes a little as I take position. Thanks. Is he gonna take this moment to come up behind us? I... I... <laughs> I decide this time I'm not going to try to grab it from one of the corners. It'll be like the movie Ghosts, but it'll be about a crane machine instead. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because of the pottery scene, you know? <laughs> but it'll be like that with a crane machine. It might not be enough to pick it up completely, but it will pull it from the rest of the toy pile for future tries. Strategy. Speaking of, I try to line up the crane just right, eyeing through the dusty glass from multiple angles to get a good idea of positioning. Now that I don't have you so anchored down, or however the fuck you want to see it as. Alright, Elio, we're doing this. Right now, I'm in the middle of something. <laughs> I pause, my paw over the lower button. It lets any other guys fuck you at Pueblo? Any big stallion types like the ones in your porn? I... <laughs> ah! Leo, why do people like you? <laughs> Way to just... 
really struggling with the with the idea of the Leo fandom existing with the way he's behaving even outside of his own route. Like Jesus Christ. Uh, like okay, I, I feel like. Okay. He's <laughs> he obviously, so he obviously, incredibly jealous. He's so all obsessed the time. with Chase, right? But there's a way to kind of okay. Like, so I imagine you don't see your ex for a while and you have a crush on them. I get it, right? You don't fucking be so fucking obvious. But then, secondly, because you look, because you don't seem pathetic. But then, secondly, you can ask this kind of question without coming off like such a dick about it. Yeah. Like, oh, you let any other guys fuck you while I'm not around? Any big. Big, t- well, big, big he's dick like, he, guys. He's not even like, doing the like the whole like fishing for answers thing. He's just straight up like being accusative in like a judgment sort of way. Yeah, which he's not in the position to yeah. be in because he's not your fucking boyfriend. It's like, like what, it's like what are, what are you used now? Like it's just bizarre. Oh, like oh, are they do bigger dicks than I do? These other people that you're fucking. It's like it's like, <laughs> like who the hell are you? Uh huh. I, I feel like uh you, you the way you'd ask this would just be like oh like so, like you know. Have you been seeing anyone? Just like, you know, just, just wondering. Like, I'll be cool. At least try to pretend like you don't, you know, so fucking blatantly, just, obsessively jealous. I've just seen so much Leo fan art over the last over the last year or he's, so. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ, look at the way he's like, acting. Like I said last time, Ted Bundy, okay? He's, you can think some person is cute, but realize that they're not a good person to fuck with. He's somehow worse so far than he was in the Leo route, right? Well, he's he, like it took a while. I mean, I kind of, I kind of have a bias now because I know about those fucking those TV dinners in his fridge. I'm not gonna ever <laughs> let it go because I'm so mad about it. But, but he, he was just kind of like sad in his. Route, he seemed, but he's he, like really he seemed pathetic at first. Directly shitty. Yeah, and and he, he got bad at the end. But I, but at that point, we kind of like we're like, oh, things are going down in Echo, so maybe there's some kind of like you can give him some excuse for his bullshit. But in this one, the bad stuff hasn't even started yet. But he's also just kind of being an asshole to you the whole time and shoving his way yes. into your plans and Jesus just being obnoxious. Christ. Uh, everything's a fight. He's gonna fuck up our. our we're, we're, he's gonna mess up our crane game too. And make the way that he's acting in this route makes it all the more apparent that in all the other routes he really does not give a shit about Carl's birthday. <laughs> Like, like even more so. You're like, oh my god, first, Leo, calm down. At least the first time you think he he does. He's so overtly manipulative. Like he has an ulterior motive to everything that he's doing. And in it's a way always that's like chase. Exhausting. It's always chase. Yeah. The tone in his voice. It is definitely one that I haven't heard in years. It seems to carry an extra intense edge. Christ, Leo, no. You haven't had sex in three years? Yeah, so... Yeah, I was gonna say that. You must be really pent up, eh? I knew he was gonna say something like that. Oh, yeah, because like yeah, Chase is just doing nothing with his dick that whole time, just because he's not having sex. Like, what a weird... Speaking as the guy I was, who yeah, has I was all the fucking say, tissue falling out of his thing, like, should, yeah, you think he's pent up? You think that's what's happening? You should know about being pent up, you fucking... Like, you have one, you know what life's like. <laughs> Yeah, but you apparently can't even drive home first, so I give you no, I give you no credit. Chula. <laughs> Chichula. <laughs> he laughs breathlessly. I exhale, trying to keep my nerve. I go ahead and press the button, the crane lowering the claw down again. You don't have to lie to me, yeah? I just want the truth. You're not owed the truth. I don't First tell you all, nothing. You don't own a, a sexual history from when we're not together, like Jesus Christ. But also, I, I, I find it, it's, it's, it's like the 17th strike against Leo is the fact that he never believes us. Yeah. Every single time Chase gives any answer for anything, he doubts him and, and, and acts like he still hasn't gotten the truth. And he's been telling the truth as far as we know. Uh, basically every time. Yeah, there's a whole like, oh, you smell like a girl thing. And yeah. It's like, oh, I use I had to use Jenna's musk spray, and only did only when TJ said something did he believe us. Like, the claw pushes the box down further. It's seeming to have different levels, different have different levels of how low it starts grasping. However, it doesn't even grasp this time. The crane just keeps lowering the claw. We can't even see the figure anymore. Not that Leo's paying any attention. If you like girls now, you can tell me. I feel him now, his thighs against my behind, the f- the familiar firmness upon the small of my back. Is, is that kind of like a thing? Like, oh well, if you're not if you're not 
attracted to me, then you must just be because you're only attracted to girls now because you must want to still fuck me, right? Because if not, then then that's not my fault. You must be attracted to girls now, right? This is just like a huge boundary cross when you're not in a relationship with each other right now. Yeah, no, this is like, this, like is, this is molest didn't molestation, Chase, technically. Didn't Chase make it clear they're not together anymore in that, like, one sad CG at the beginning of the game before the branching? Yeah. The one that, that she was talking about? Yeah. So, like, this is, like, this is very, this is very uncomfortable the way that he's acting right now. I stare at the machine. The claw still hasn't come up yet. Leo. His paws, his paw takes my hip. Hmm? Can you fuck off? Yes. Good job, Chase. Good job, Chase. What? What? Oh. <laughs> wow, I hate this room still. It's you No, know, it's even worse. <laughs> it's I, even worse with the turnaround. I hate it. I guess it's just like it's basically it's basically just like a fucking like I guess they said it was roller rink, but I guess it's like it's essentially like, essentially like a whole dedicated room just to having like a basketball court in the mall essentially like that's what this well, place it's just, it's just like a it's is. one of those like you have your birthday party here and there's like a place to play video games and there might be a roller rink there might be a basketball court there might be like things to do like trampolines and shit yeah kid activity palace well hi everyone's seeing me get uh sexually harassed by leo so how's everyone how's everyone how's everyone doing i'm glad we told him to fuck off because that as l loud in front of everybody yeah. <laughs> It's gonna be a good. We're gonna have a good birthday party at Carl's <laughs> today. I wonder how much. That's they... today. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Carl. Your birthday's gonna be a little awkward. <laughs> how do you? Oh my fucking god! I wonder how much they heard. I. It's not, it's, I mean, they can see. Yeah. And hear. So th this one, uh, you know, every frame of painting. <laughs> <laughs> how the fuck do you write scenes like this? It's so effective, and I don't know how you. It's wild. I don't know how fiction works. And I've tried to do it before. Wow. <laughs> I, uh... Uh... Leo's paws are off me now. The wolf turns to face the others. Uh, how long have you two been here? Long enough. Uh, I... I was just trying to... I thought you were better than this sort of behavior, Leo. This was a private conversation, eh? That Chase clearly didn't want to be a part of. Well, I didn't know that until just now. He looks back at me. His eyes are wide and his shoulders are raised up high. The wolf visibly tense. I'm still reeling from what just happened. From Leo's behavior. From my own words. I say nothing. He sucks in his jowls, trying to put on a smile. We, uh, <laughs> we found a present for Carl in this crane machine here. A lucha guy, yeah? TJ leans to peer inside the machine. I don't see it. It's because Chase won it? The claw and crane are back at their starting positions. No, the claw, like, shoved it in further. Oh, like they're oh, fucked. Oh. oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, well... Chula here beside me must have buried it somehow. It's all your fault, Leah. Buried it? You know what I mean, Teach. Like I was trying to bury myself in his... <laughs> in his cheeks. In the children's megaplex. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is so intensely awkward about every element of this. Everything about it. Oh my goodness. I, I was so sure, too. I'm like, oh, wow, one perfect little gift just for Carl. This is not going to work out. There's no way they're getting it. <laughs> it went as badly as possible. He shrugs, visibly not knowing what Leo means. Jenna gives Leo a look I don't quite catch before stepping off to the, stepping up to the machine. She's going to fucking win it. <laughs> she squints, looking over the pile of toys. No, no, I see it. That green and purple cardboard thing in the middle beneath the Mothman plushie. A Mothman plushie. She reaches into her purse, sifting through it for a moment before fighting two quarters. Is she gonna nail it again? She, she's like fucking the, great. Just like the carnival game. You know, I thought they were gonna reveal at some point how she won the carnival game, but they don't actually she just talk won about it, it because she did. She's just so good. Yeah, but I feel like I feel like she knew a trick to it because she maybe because she went up against Leo and and like. Leo's obviously stronger than her. No yeah. offense to fucking Jenna here. But like I think Leo's physically powerful but untalented. 
Well, I think I think the thing is that Jenna knew the trick, which makes me think that there must be a trick to those machines in terms of like where to hit it. Or it might just be a trick of how to actually swing well in the first place. Yeah, but I, like, I don't know, man. Leo's fucking big. I feel like even if he swung, swung, swung like an idiot, he'd be able to like kunk, hit it. He's at least the third slowest person here, but these two people could be able to outpace him. Like, there's just like yeah, but there's nothing about there's, that. There's like little, there's like tricks to like what you can do and like what you actually accomplish. And it's like, I don't know. I feel like the hammer might be heavy enough that you might be able to do stuff with it, regardless of how strong you are, if you just actually know how to swing effectively. And I think Leo is just confidently ineffective at a lot of things. Like he just kind of thinks that he's just big enough to do things, and that's it. He's really not good at a lot of things, is he? <laughs> no. We all just sort of stand there, staring at her as the lights flash around the window, illuminating her features with golden glow. She fiddles with it a lot longer than I did, 30 seconds passing before she actually hits the lower button. Yeah, you gotta tap, 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 tap on all sides to get it just right. That's why it's called a skill game. The I mean, claw most of the time it's rigged. But... Yes. The claw descends, pushing through the muck of plush and plastic. The sound of metal scraping the box is audible, even if it is difficult to see what is happening. Out of the corner of my eye, I can see that Leo's facade of a smile has completely dissipated. He looks at me, though his gaze is unfocused. It's like he's trying to numb himself, but it isn't working. The claw finally lifts, the metal prongs clutching the central mass of the figure figurine container and carrying it to the drop slot. With a satisfying clunk, the box falls in, and the crane returns to its default position. Leo's form stiffens. He stares at the machine, Jenna, and then me again. He crosses his arms, and I, and I see his face start to shake, his eyes clench shut. I'll be in the fucking van. Oh. What a dick! <laughs> As he leaves, Leo smacks a nearby pinball machine so hard the glass cracks. How dare you punch a pinball machine? <laughs> that's not yours, and also that's... The, the pinball uh, machines are awesome. Why the fuck you gotta just be a dick? <laughs> just because you can't fucking Jesus win the crane machine? Christ. Fucking... Oh, I would, he, we've seen him execute Kudzu, and I still wasn't ready for the sheer number of red flags <laughs> that, are keep, that keep happening. Oh, cool. Random bouts of physical violence when he throws tantrums about any random thing. Like all of the punch well, holes in his wall. It would be great to be in a relationship with a person like that. Yeah. Don't you love tiptoeing through all your interactions so that you don't, like, trample on their ego for a second? And make them destroy all your, all your personal Christ. belongings? TJ stands there with his paws behind his head, ma agape. And so the real Leo reveals himself. Oh my goodness. TJ walks over to the pinball machine, bending down to gather up what splintered glass there is in front of in in the front of his shirt. I watch Leo trudge off around the corner, though I could still hear his heavy footfalls for a while after. I wait a bit, just to make sure he's really gone. Jenna, meanwhile, steps up, handing me the boxed figurine. So, uh, is there a crappy boardwalk game that you can't beat? <laughs> Despite what just happened, I see a flicker of a smile tuck at the corner of her lips. Well, all you have to do is hook the claw where the cardboard meets the plastic. Her gaze shifts from the broken glass on the tacky carpet to the crane machine. And that way it gets lashed in the grooves of the box and doesn't drop. I had a lot of practice with my summer job, but you did most of the work for me by putting it into position. Good job. I've never had I've never been to a crane machine that has had boxes. I've only seen crane machines no. that have like plushes, plushes or like yeah. or those rubber balls. Oh yeah, and I've never seen a box in a crane machine before. Uh she moves past me, patting my back some before kneeling down beside TJ and helping him clean up. I turn to face her again. You should be the one to give it to Carl. After all, you're the one who won it for him. No. Then I'd be a hypocrite after what I said earlier about his clutter problem. You'll like, like this from you, though. Yeah, I guess. 
We should probably hurry before someone besides us decides to visit this mall. I peer around, checking to make sure that we're the still the only people here. I see, a co I see a coffee sitting at the service desk, so whoever is managing this place today might be back soon. And before Leo decides to drive off without us. He wouldn't do that. Mm. <laughs> mm. Ah, I mean, you'd think he wouldn't hit a pinball machine and break uh. it, but, you know. TJ gathers the glass with it from his shirt and places it in a small pile on the bench nearby. Jenna does the same. Maybe find a trash can, guys. Yeah. It's, then those... put it on a bench where people sit. Yeah. <laughs> yes, well, I'd rather not tempt the odds or the potential 30 mile outside city limits cab fare. Should we leave some money for the pinball machine repair? No, TJ, it's alright. None of us should have to deal with Leo's mess more than we already have. Mm. She seems familiar with this, which is very concerning about Leo. If this wasn't that surprising. Yeah, no, honestly, like the lack uh, of... If, if, if anyone that I currently knew punched a pinball machine in anger, because I don't really know anyone like that, it would be definitely like one of those things that would take... I would react much like more surprised than either of them did in that situation. Yeah. <laughs> Keith is punching a pinball machine. He's getting no. angry. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, no, I like. So that makes me think that they know that he's capable of it. Because honestly, any person I know punching a pinball machine would just be like, "What the fuck? <laughs> Where did that you, come from? What is this baby tantrum you're throwing here?" It, it, it concerns me because like we get back to how Leo treats Clint, and it's like. There was the, in in some way the way they introduced Clint was a little confusing because they definitely make him as unsympathetic as possible and make him seem like this weird aggressor that comes after you for no reason, which is in line with what happened all the way back when you we were talking to Leo outside the motel and people randomly like drove by and threw slurs at us. Mm -hmm. So it's like you expect like this guy to just be this weird racist homophobic asshole, and he it seems to be that, but then they. It, it's kind of a case where I feel like I have to believe uh, how the narrative is like basically what we're told more than we're shown a little bit because basically over there's a series of of, of points where it become where, they're, where they they try to make it clear to us that essentially Clint is kind of Leo's victim, but it was like made it it was like kind of told as confusingly as possible because of all the almost all the actual on screen actions being Clint being the aggressor essentially. But they keep trying to remind us that essentially, like, there's a background arc that happened off camera where uh, Clint and some other kids would pick on them when they were young, but then Leo got bigger, and then cl uh, it became clear at some point that Leo would pick fights with Clint on purpose because he wanted the excuse to beat on him, basically. Yeah, and a lot of this, like, you know, obviously all of us went off, you know, to college and had been gone for several years. I mean, I'm not saying that, and, and but you also get the like the impression from the last uh, route that Clint and Leo have interacted, like since that point, and were like, I mean, they were familiar, but not obviously not on good terms. Which makes me wonder if in all that time during Chase's absence, that like Leo's just been a dick to Clint that whole time. Yeah, well, like it seems because it sounds like he. Like they obviously don't get along, but it's made it, it was made clear that Leo's clearly not trying to de-escalate or stay away from Clint so much as he like is he, looking forward to these encounters because yeah. he gets to beat up Clint basically. Yeah, and I'm sure. That, I mean, and, and you know, like we only see it from our, our like the memory that Chase has, and from Clint being a dick to us. But I'm sure there was times when they were growing up in school where like Leo was just this big kid who would like encounter Clint on his way home and just fucking terrorize yeah. him. It makes me wonder. It makes me wonder a little bit whether or not the, uh, whether or not you can directly uh, project the seven deadly sins onto the main characters in some way. Wait, are but, there seven? Yeah. No. Oh. Seven? No, there's six characters. There's seven deadly sins, though. Well, yeah, I know. That, yeah. <laughs> I know that there's I, seven. Well, deadly I was second sins. guessing which part. You, which part you were second guessing about? No, the seven. I was thinking about the characters. There's, there's the five routes and then Chase, but yeah. seventh friend is dead. Oh, that's a good point. There were seven friends. <laughs> So yeah. it makes me curious. But I don't because, know if we, like, we know enough about Sydney to figure yeah, no. out. But maybe we will. They have to talk about Sydney at some point, right? But the uh, I, I just wonder, like... like, Blink could be Wrath. No. No? 
No, I think Leo's uh, like jealousy though. He's the oh, yeah. envy. Oh yeah, he probably is envy, right? I would it's think just he was Leo, envy. It's just Leo does the most wrath. <laughs> yeah, but I think that Flynn is just the most. But no, he's definitely just defi- wrathful. Yeah, no. And sloth Flynn to be seems Carl. like yes. I don't know if anyone would be gluttony specifically, but like. Uh, well, I mean, well, gluttony Jenna could be feel, Carl. Jenna seems like greed, and uh, TJ seems like pride. Why do you mean pride? And and Chase is lust. <laughs> uh, maybe? I don't know. I don't feel like... I don't know if Chase really fits any of those for me, personally. No. I don't, like, I, They're a little shaky, but I, 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 just, I was talking about... I was just hinting a little bit at, at uh, Jenna's, Jenna's materialism post having to deal with people going through all her shit and taking her stuff all the time. It was, like, it was hinting at stuff a bit, but that's, that's shaky. But no, like... Carl is absolutely would be sloth, and Flynn's probably f- Fury, but we don't know him that well yet because we keep not spending time with him. And Leo's envy. I, I just wonder if it if it graphs on or not. It'd be really interesting to see if uh, if Sydney like adds to that list or not. But we'll have to come this back is to literally, it. I have no idea if this would fit at all. It's just that it was it was the first hack idea that I had when I was trying to think of a like a horror story. Is I was like, okay. Uh, seven deadly sins and the thirteen circles of hell. <laughs> oh yeah, like go through the state, like the creates create narrative steps that are analogous to the thirteen, uh, the ter- the thirteen uh, circles of hell, and then take the seven deadly sins. And in my case, there was three characters, so I was gonna like ap- assign each of them two or three of them, and then like try to like figure out what their character would mean if they had if they had those flaws, because you're trying to like. It's like a shorthand to try to figure out how to write several people because you can't just write everyone like a self insert because they have to all be uh, separate personalities that foil with each other and also like come into conflict and so on. And so it's like it's it's easy to try to just be like, okay, what kind of external rule set can I try to throw on this thing and then try to work from there? Well, it's it's like they were saying earlier about like how your your brain does want patterns for things. Yeah. How many stages of grief are there? Uh. Five? Was it five? Or six? It's like denial, acceptance. One of, one of them is like rage. Basically, you get really, you get, you get really angry, and then one of them is like you try to plead, and one of oh them is like God. acceptance. Oh, what if they were the stages of grief? That'd be interesting. I don't remember how many there are. Though. This, had... this, this is this is like what I'm saying about the about the about the pattern seeking. Like honestly, it, it could be unrelated to any of that. It, it could just be characters. Be, that... that would be kind of interesting if every if, if all five characters were stuck in one of the stages of grief over Sydney or something, and that's how they were characterized. Because well, Leo way. would definitely be the pleading one. Because I mean, obviously not in terms of 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 uh, Sydney, but more so in terms of pleading yeah. with you, I want, I want or, deni- or maybe denial. Like on honestly. one hand, it feels it feels like hacky and I mean, trite. I mean, so, I mean, so does like deadly sins. Like, well, I'm just I'm just being like all of these ideas feel a little hacky and trite, but at the same time, it's like it's just kind of like how you like you fill out like a D and D character sheet, and you're like, okay, here's his flaws and here's his quirks, and you just try to like work from there, and then. Oh, they're coming! It's the narrative police, uh, and you try to uh, you just try to fill out the backstory from there, and like you, you, need some, you just need some kind of starting point to define someone, and then see where you can go from there. Kind of makes me wonder, like, what what traits of these characters did come first, and then which ones came from them, like fleshing them out from there, and so on. Like, what was the starting, what was the starting nucleus of this entire game? It is really interesting to think of people's like in- inspiration for things like this. I. uh... Like, yeah, no, that is really interesting. I mean, it makes you think back to like all the like if if I could think of any other like horror movies or things that basically followed like that was that was the secret is that it, they were actually this the whole time. Like, yeah, yada yada. I mean, um, I think we're obviously all affected by people we know and like parts of our past. And I think honestly, I think that's actually what probably builds most stories for people is just associations with things and then fleshing them out, like and maybe have them be parts of you you know as the writer but it is fun to try to like, but it does make me think of like uh, all those like I don't know if they're creepy I don't know if they're considered creepy pastas but all those like you know like did you know that in the Rugrats like all the kids were actually dead and like, <laughs> like basically like all these like conspiracy theories about like old cartoons and stuff yeah it's like you know and uh, yeah and like so the Spongebob characters all being like deadly sins and like you know Winnie the Pooh, like, they're all, like, Christopher Robin is, like, actually a split personality, and, like, all the characters are, like, parts of his personalities, and yeah, 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 yeah. 
Like, they're fun. They're fun. But I, every time I hear one of those, I'm like, how I could poke a million holes in that, you know? I was trying to go back and look into this because I, was, I, I remember hearing that it's like a weird... Just getting to the weird development history of Echo... It was apparent. I think it was apparently like originally a spinoff of a completely a completely different furry visual novel called Blackgate, and they at one point announced something called Blackgate Project C or something, and it was supposed to be a spinoff, and it just became Sounds like, like an Echo. Anime. <laughs> yeah, like it became Echo by Howley, and it just like, and then years later we are where we are now. But I'm like, it makes me wonder like what the hell the connection was. There. I, I think I heard the Blackgate never even gets got finished. So it was like a spin-off to an unfinished project that also ultimately went away because almost all these things never get done. And it's like it makes you wonder like what how many how many weird narrative versions got iterated on and like what what were the characters going to be? What was the setting going to be like? Was it always like gonna be this like sort of night in the woods, silent hill thing, or was it like paranormal investigators? <laughs> like like what who knows where it all fucking started? <laughs> Uh, this makes me want to watch like a bunch of like creepy videos after this now. Yeah. S Squidward's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Hyper realistic eyes. <laughs> I rest my head against the passenger window as I balance the cheap fast food place red velvet cake on my lap. What, what? fast? <laughs> I knew. What? <laughs> what fast food place sells red velvet cake? What? Are we? Mi is this an East Coast thing? Are we missing something, Keith? Like. Well, this is a West Coast game. Well, I know, but it doesn't have. To where are they? Where, where's Where's Howley from? Where are they from? I don't know. They're 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 reclusive. Where couldn't we find a fast food place that sells red velvet cake, please? They they rarely say much, and I don't know if much information is known about them. Uh, they did come out into the, uh, they did pop in the Discord for a bit the other day and said that that, uh, if the if the if it was in our world, then in 2015 Leo probably would have voted for voted for Trump. <laughs> Which is just a lot. <laughs> it's a lot to unpack. Well, let me just, I put that right next to the, the uh, TV dinners in your brain of yeah. red flags. Ooh, like, look I at just, all these red flags. They're so pretty. Like, I'm trying to think. I'm like, it feels like... I think I'm... Am I still guessing when I say that Howley's even a dude? No, I don't think I'm guessing. No, because I think... Because Haps has talked about him before, and I don't want to like repeat anything from that or anything, because I don't want to like intrude upon Howley or anything. But I, I do think that it's been. Conf I, th I think that Haps has called him a, a he. So there's that at least. Because I was like, I was just kind of assuming that someone that that writes gay porn was a it was a dude, but that's not always true. Hey man. All those, all those girls that buy yaoi manga. Is, yeah, you know. No, no, this week, Nomi Fuki said that they're that they're a woman. Who's that? Nomi Fuki draws the uh, Shiro and Kuro. The uh, those two that that uh, the white and gray uh, wolf dudes that are like Japanese delinquent characters in that art style. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of them are like my desktop backgrounds and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, that's a, that's by a female artist all along. Dude, girls. I, for once I a, love watching guys fuck each other. And for other. once, it's a female artist that draws dudes the way that dudes draw dudes, and not the way that the, the, like a lot of female artists draw draw, draw gay dudes as like weird, really long people, <laughs> like they're really long and thin, and they have big hands and so on. Wait, who draws them like that? It's it's fairly common. It's a whole like is it an art? It's just a type. Well, it's it's the the the, the joke is like the yaoi hands and stuff. Like, oh yeah, just they a, do have big hands. It's just hands. an ongoing thing where you see. We see women draw gay dudes on like Twitter and stuff. They're often like really long and slender and clean. Well, they're usually and, pretty and, and like then, kind of handsome. Yeah. And but but all about the and same time. And then dudes time, draw like big old triangular giant chested dudes. There's also I, okay. So it's not, obviously not everything is like a consistent forever rule or whatever. I, but I I didn't really like this anime very much like necessarily. So sorry if you really liked it. But like I always remember it because I think it was like a really great concept. But it's that one. It's a it's that kiss him not me, where there's there's a there's a girl who she, you know as per like normal um, you know plot line fashion she gets like hot all of a sudden and all these guys like wanna want to get with her so she has like a bunch of guys following her around but she just wants to watch them make out and so the whole show <laughs> is about her denying their advances but trying to get them to get with each other so she, so she can watch because she she's always been like a fan of yaoi what a premise to say and i thought that was a great premise like i said i didn't like the show that much but i thought the premise was great yeah because i'm, <laughs> I'm every time we watch a movie there's like two guys i'm just like 
now kiss. <laughs> now yeah. kiss, please. Stephanie is now holding a Nomi Fuki magazine because I, I imported Nom Nom Volume 1 and 2. <laughs> Nom Nom Volume 1 and 2. It's a great title. No, cool, it's cause I, I, I guess it's a play on Nomi Fuki, I guess. Well, Nom Nom just like... What's disappointing is that because it's from Japan, it's all censored, even though it's a physical print you order. Yeah, I don't get... Like, okay, I will say... The censoring I've, looks I've, so I've bad, seen a lot too. Of, uh, <laughs> the bars? I've seen a lot of porn, and I don't get the bars on, on the dick, because it doesn't do anything. Like, how, like, what does it really censor, really? Come on now. It's, it's, it's incredibly confusing. Like, there must be incre like an incredibly specific set of rules they're following, because of how, like... It's like a very thin line right across, like... Yeah. The frenulum. And I'm like, <laughs> why? It's like, what incredibly specific thing were you required to censor? Because the fact that any of it is uncensored is the strangest part, right? If if a child saw this, they would know that was a dick. Still, like, yeah, it's it's I'm it's confusing. I'm so confused by Japanese rules, like pixelization of the entire thing, or blurring of the entire thing, or like putting a bar over the entire thing. All makes sense to me intuitively of like what you're going for. Because well, maybe you but don't the want them to know what the dick looks but like. But the fact that but the, that like there's a bunch of Japanese art where they just censor it with like ten black bars that all like stripe over to really specific parts mm -hmm, of it. Sometimes mm -hmm. you're like, I don't understand. But, like there must be like a paragraph they're reading that's like here's here's the specific places you're required to to put the bars. They're and just finding loopholes. Like it, I don't I don't get it. You know, it's really. This is a side note, but I thought it was really funny because a long time ago, my my brother got a copy of um, Watchmen. You know yeah. the comic. Uh, I said, you know the comic, as if Keith doesn't know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, you're borrowing my copy of it. Well, yeah, I want to. <laughs> I've read it before. I want to read it again. But the um, you've been borrowing it for like three you, years. You, I borrow it. Okay, I'm borrowing <laughs> too many things from you. It's not my fault. <laughs> but but anyways, you're, you're gonna read it so we can watch the show together. We can still just watch the show together. It's been, it's been so long. But I just think it's it's funny because he didn't realize at the time because he'd bought it, but so, from like a used bookstore online or something. Yeah. But somebody had very very professionally with very straight lines drawn black bars over Doctor Manhattan's dick every time <laughs> it shows up, and it, if if you look at it honestly, it's done so. Like it almost looks like a. Pr it looks like he thought it was printed on because somebody drew it so like perfectly yeah. straight that he thought that that every copy had his dick censored out. And I, and I, I like I, <laughs> I, when I opened, I'm like, no, this is not how it's supposed to look. And I, I, I'm like, look, you hold it up against the light, you can tell it's sharpie. And he's like, what? If they so, were so truly we're... talented, they would have just redrawn his underwear every time. <laughs> it was black anyway. Everybody, but it's like every time. So he thought for he thought that that was just censored, and I was like. No, it's not supposed to look like this. No. But so somebody somebody had the gall to sell their used copy as new, quote, quote, like you new, like barely used, whatever, but draw a bar over every dick and then that shows they, up. And they didn't even keep that volume. Yeah, they sold it to someone without telling them that they, that they defiled the book. <laughs> I have defiled the D. Dr. Manhattan is my favorite superhero. <laughs> Because <laughs> he doesn't care. I like the part where he does no good things and uh, his dick's out. Yeah, he's, he's basically <laughs> just God. God has his dick out all the time. <laughs> is that a, is this a, I, I missed that part of the Bible. <laughs> I also, this is the part where God's not real, but you know. This is the, one of the most awkward car rides I've ever been in. They're talking about God's dick. <laughs> Everyone How is completely silent. Is. Just... TJ's previous attempts to lighten the mood have become have been received with idle grunts and nods. My stomach hurts, and I have this nauseous feeling that keeps bubbling up when I think about what happened. Leo and I have squabbled in the past, sure, but never like this. Most of the time we fought about video game shit, politics, and sports. The worst it ever got was when the topic of leaving Echo came up. I danced around to answer it for as long as I could, and the truth came out in the worst possible way. But now? Now is different. I've never felt such a contempt for him before, like I did when he pressed against me, interrogating me like I belonged to him. He probably thought I'd just bend over against the crane machine for old times' sake. Watching him from the corner of my eye now, I see him trying to keep his ears up, but they keep pinning back down. 
I'm stuck in this shitty feeling of being pissed at Leo and ashamed of myself. He shouldn't have acted that way. But I know I just hurt him in a manner that I haven't done in a long time. Well, he, sh he shouldn't have been doing that. It's no. not your fault. You shouldn't be feeling bad about this, Chase. No, boundaries were already placed, and he, like, did stuff you shouldn't do to anyone you're not literally in a relationship with right now. And half the time, even that is inappropriate in many spaces that will make them uncomfortable. The... Uh, and the worst part is now Chase has this weird bad feeling of guilt and all this stuff that has been basically forced upon him by Leo doing his stupid thing. Like, now now, now Chase has to feel guilty and bad about all this, and it's not yeah. at all his obligation. Like, that that's the worst part. Being stuck in a car with someone who's thinking about you, and you're thinking about them, and you're both hurting, is hell. I really wish I brought my headphones. I stare out the window as we roll down the first dirt road into Echo. Every street, every corner, every trailer and every tree has a memory attached to it. There, in the middle of the dusty parking lot that belonged to the corner market, is a tiny stand. That used to be where I'd get ice cream after begging for a dollar from my parents. It's crumbled and boarded up now, the paint peeling off in tiny chips. And there... In front of Duke's house is a big, flat rock that Jenna was standing on when she told me she was going to run away from home. I can still remember almost exactly how she was silhouetted against the red sunset behind her. And the old train yard where I kissed Leo for the first time, after staying up all night at our first real party. Hey, you got knocked out. You didn't stay up all night. <laughs> <laughs> I look over at Leo. He's got one hand on the wheel. Glancing up at the rearview mirror occasionally. He hasn't so much looked, as looked at me since the, the family plex, though I see him staring at Jenna now. She catches his gaze, somehow returning it with an even more curt look. Carl probably, Carl probably still isn't even awake yet. Do you have a plan if he doesn't answer the door? We'll call him then. And what if he doesn't answer his phone? Will you shatter the window too? Oh, Jenna. Okay, we need to cancel this. <laughs> we need to go home. I. We cannot go to Carl's place right now. This cannot happen. I'm I'm so anxious right now about this entire fucking plan. It was like, this was already the worst thing that happens in the entirety of the Echo storyline before everything goes to shit. Like, before the horror stuff starts, the worst well, thing this, is Carl's this birthday was every time. the first horror, because all yeah. of us had the realization and the, and the, the uh. cringe of feeling like, what if somebody, all, like, what if everyone showed up at, at your house unannounced, woke you up, and was like, surprise party. It's just I so like, much worse than ever before now. I feel the like fact that everyone's fear, <laughs> like, it's like just knowing, it's like, it's like having people show up to a Christmas party that were, that were just fighting. Like... I, I, no, no, we need to call it off. This was like the the end of the family trip I just went on. <laughs> we just like Christ. we, we all went shouldn't on have come a here. Hike without him, calm the fuck down. Uh, well, okay, like uh, it, okay, okay. A couple things. One, <gasps> Jenna, I appreciate your sentiment. I understand this. I I get why you're pissed off, but you have to realize that a. He drove you here and can leave you at any time. Yeah, that's always that's that, that's my that's my self defense thinking in like, my brain. But secondly, you're, you're gonna ruin Carl's whole fucking day. I mean, you're gonna do it anyway. But yeah. but you're in gonna fact, show up. She very up. directly does in Carl's timeline. <laughs> you're gonna fucking show up and be hella awkward and all standoffish towards each other in front of poor Carl, who is the reason that you're there, and that's not kind to him. So at this point, you just gotta buckle up and just deal with. Leo for an hour until you can all be separated again. You can l go somewhere by yourself. It's like it's like when you're at a family party and you and your significant other get in a fucking a secret fight and you're just like, okay, just fucking we're gonna get through this and act like everything's fine and we can fight when we get home. <laughs> like 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 that. You know? Anyone so anyone who's much. had a significant other for long enough knows what happens when you're pissed at them, but you have to go to a family event. Or some sort of party, and you're just like, okay. 
And this is all when you're already planning on meeting up with Flynn, too, which is already this hot wire from earlier. And you're like, (laughs) and some people are really good at sensing tension. And then some people are really good at sensing tension, but are also dickish enough to mention it. Yes. I'm really good at sensing tension, but I'm not going to fucking, I never say it. And I know people that are like in a hurry to point it out. They're like, are is something wrong? And they say it really loud in front of everyone, and you're like, fucking fuck. Like, but then you have TJ. Who will... Ice cream! <laughs> yeah, how about everyone... Let's just all talk to TJ, and we'll have a great day. Okay? Uh, Leo's just, muzzle pulls into a snarl. I hear him mutter something I can't quite discern. He shifts focus back on the road, his knuckles tight on the steering wheel. TJ gives another go at trying to fill the silence. Well, I don't think this will go too badly. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) It's just that we're hanging out. It's just like we're hanging out again. Nothing wrong with that. I agree, TJ. Though I do think this is perhaps a bit poorly planned. It should be an alright time. I haven't been in Carl. I haven't been to Carl's in so long. The car starts. The car starts slowing <laughs> Carl down, starts. and I snap out of my daydreaming to look up, knowing that we definitely weren't at Carl's house yet. That's when I see a canine figure standing further up the side of the road. Oh, oh, we, it's time for us to witness it. Um, we're Flynn now. What the fuck's her name again? Jan- uh, Janice. 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 She's standing in the dirt that separates the road and the field in front of a broken and rusted barbed wire fence. I think that's Janice. I look over at Leo and he seems concerned, his brows furrowed as he carefully steers the car right up next to the coyote. I can see why. She's crouched over, elbows on her knees, staring at the ground. Well done your window, Chase. I do as he says, struggling a little with the old crank handle. What is she doing out here? We come to a stop next to the coyote, kicking up some dust. I don't know. Uh, Hey. TJ rolls down his window as well, waving. Oh. Hi, Janice. Oh, (laughs) no, TJ. (laughs) Leo leans over me and looks out at her. She's still looking at the ground. Everything all... Leo's voice cuts off in a weird choking sound. I look at him, confused. Then look back out the window, and I can't help myself, but I gasp. It was hard to tell from the angle, and all the dust kicked up from the van, but now I can see that Janice has her pants down around her thighs. I can also see everything else. I sit back down quickly and avert my eyes, looking out the windshield instead. Is she? Oh my god. Leo, keep going. Jenna whispers it, her voice strained. Oh, uh... Sorry, uh... Leo stops talking, and I chance a glance out the window again. Janice is looking at us now, and she's smiling. It's a weird smile, because it isn't touching her eyes. It's unnerving. Leo stares back. Leo, let's just go. I hiss out the side of my mouth, uh, staring out the windshield again. He seems reluctant, too, though, looking concerned. Janice, uh, do you need some help? His tone is one you might use on a toddler or a crazy person. I don't hear her say anything except maybe a grunt. Leo bravely keeps trying, though. Uh, We can give you a ride. Leo stops talking in time for me to hear a pattering sound. A sound I recognize well from being a kid pissing on the dirt roads of Echo. The van lurches forward, then resumes a smoother acceleration back onto the empty road. What in God's name? I don't... I don't know. Leo's frowning, looking as confused as I've ever seen him. Should I... Should I go back? No! (laughs) I look back and see TJ covering his face. Maybe. She could be having some kind of psychotic episode. Maybe she just really had to go? I'm like that after a ton of caffeine sometimes. TJ, I'm fairly certain you haven't peed yourself in front of anyone since Miss Mueller's Thanksgiving play. And you certainly weren't smiling at the audience while you were while, we, while you were at it. I... Please don't talk about that now. I, I don't think so. 
You see the way she looked at me? She was probably just on something, isn't everyone? No, she doesn't do stuff like that. Well, maybe she does. You never know with people. Again, Leo doesn't say anything, and neither does anyone else. We don't go back. Janice! <laughs> Ah, uh, alright, get ready for anxiety. <laughs> Already there. Mm -hmm.